Hey guys, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a question and answer video. I asked you all on Instagram a few days ago if you had any questions for me and I wrote a few of them down. So we're gonna start off with the question that I feel like I get asked the most and it is, how do you swirl your smoothie bowls? And honestly guys, I just use a spoon. I have a baby spoon that I like to eat with just cause I think eating with small spoons is fun and I just swirl it around the bowl to make the swirl. I don't know, I think practice makes perfect, and I actually did record it in a What I Eat in a Day video recently, so that should be coming to you all shortly, so I guess you're just gonna have to watch all of my videos until you see it. All-time favorite smoothie bowl? Honestly, it's probably whatever I eat that day, because I just listen to what my body's craving, and whatever I have in my pantry, and I whip it up, and I've never made a smoothie bowl that I didn't like. If you could only eat three foods for the rest of your life, what would they be? Bananas, sweet potatoes, and spinach. Do you use canned or dried beans? So I used to use canned beans just because it's pretty convenient, but recently I did buy an Instant Pot, which is an electronic pressure cooker. So I've been experimenting with making my own beans because I think even though beans aren't that expensive, it is cheaper just to buy them dried. How long does it take for you to make your smoothie bowls? So a lot of people seem to ask me how long it takes to make my food to take a picture, but realistically, it does not take that long. Like, I'm cooking the food anyways and I would be eating it normally even if I wasn't going to take a picture of it. So the whole styling part of it and then taking a picture of it, I'd say maybe takes like two minutes max. And I don't like align all my grains of rice so they're a perfect spiral or whatever. Kind of just like plop it in the bowl and I'm like, yeah, that looks good. Opinion on counting calories or macros? If you're eating in abundance of whole plant-based foods, there really is no need to track your calories or make sure you're eating enough. The only reason I think you should ever actually count your calories is if you're recovering from an eating disorder and if you have a minimum amount of calories you eat in a day or if you're first transitioning to veganism and you just wanna make sure you're eating enough food. But honestly, I think that counting your calories only leads to disordered eating and restricting certain food. You shouldn't deprive yourself of it if your body is telling you that it wants it. Unless it's an animal product, then say no thank you. Do you take B12 and if so, in what form? And somebody else asked if there was a natural way for vegans to get B12. And honestly, the only way anybody gets B12 anymore is through supplementation, so it is the most natural way. B12 is made by bacteria that usually reside in soil, so that is why it's in meat products because they're eating the dirt. But now, honestly, most of the time, animals that are used for meat are actually just injected with B12 because the soil has low quality. Bite Size Vegan actually has a whole video about B12 and I'm not as qualified as she is, so I will link it here and you should watch it if you have any further questions. Is eating heaps of fruit bad and will it slow weight loss? Well, realistically speaking, eating a lot of anything will cause you to gain weight. But, however, fruits and vegetables are not that calorically dense, so in order for you to eat enough to like actually gain weight, you would feel disgusting. Like you would not be able to eat that much in a sitting normally. So I think that if you want to eat fruit and your body's telling you that you want fruit, go for it. Restricting yourself to two pieces of fruit before like 4 p.m. or whatever is so stupid. I easily eat over like five to 10 servings of fruit in a day, sometimes more, and obviously I am very obese. Is it bad to eat at a normal restaurant where they serve meat and dairy? No, I don't think that's bad at all because some areas don't even have that many vegan restaurants, and you vote with your dollar, so if you buy a vegetarian or vegan option, you're actually supporting that, and the restaurant is recognizing that they have more people, and maybe they'll put even more vegan options on the menu. If you could combine two fruits or plants into one masterful creation, what would it be? This is really hard because I actually feel like there are a lot of things that I would like to combine, but I think I would combine ginger and blueberries because I love that combination together and you could just call it a gingerberry. Would you rather live without sweet potatoes or bananas? Mm, bananas. What healthy fats do you incorporate into your lifestyle? In the past, I'd say usually all my fats came from nuts and seeds, but recently I've actually been buying avocados more recently, so I've been eating some of that. Um, I also like to eat chia seeds, and I'd say out of all the nut butters or spreads, I actually tend to go for tahini the most, which is whole sesame seeds, but I do really like peanut butter and almond butter as well. I just don't have them as much on a frequent basis. Do you eat a lot of bread? 
I wouldn't say I eat a lot of bread, but I do eat it and I'm definitely not afraid of it. It just depends how I'm feeling that week and if I come across it at the grocery store and if I decide that I want to get it or not. What do you do about food or eating when you're traveling to a place that doesn't have a lot of vegan options? To be honest, I think that every restaurant does have a vegan option. It just might kind of suck. So my suggestions for that would be to look ahead at menus to make sure there are options for you. Maybe if you have the opportunity to call the restaurant to see if they can make a special meal for you, if it's a more special occasion with your family. Eat beforehand and then maybe order a smaller side dish so then that way you won't still be hungry. Or for if there really isn't anything, I would just pack a snack and bring it with me. Because personally, an animal's life isn't worth me eating a meal out with my family. I'll just go and sit there and like still have a good time with them. But I'm just not going to eat animal products. Ever. Opinion on fake vegan meats. I used to eat a lot of them when I was younger. I don't really eat them as much now, but I think that if you like them, then they're vegan and they're cruelty free, so go ahead. And I think they can be great for people transitioning into a vegan lifestyle who are used to eating more meaty products. What is your favorite part of the day? Probably breakfast but also like just the morning when it's nice and quiet and no one's really woken up yet. You can just like watch the sunrise and it's really peaceful. I think that's my favorite part. Do you prefer summer or winter? Summer all the way. I hate being cold. Where do you want to travel slash where have you traveled? Okay, so I'll go through where I have gone first. So in high school, I went on a short little trip to Spain and Portugal. And then I didn't travel outside of the United States until my junior year of college where I studied abroad. I actually studied in Buenos Aires, Argentina for four months and I loved it. And while I was there, I got to travel to some cities in Chile. And I also went to Rio in Brazil for a week. And then a few months ago, I actually did a road trip out west with my mom. I have a vlog on it if you're interested in seeing it. That's pretty much all of the like vacation trips that I've planned. As far as where I want to go, it's like pretty much everywhere. But top of my list is definitely Australia. But I want to have like a solid month to dedicate to traveling. So I want to go to like Melbourne, Adelaide, Sydney, everywhere. So I don't know when I'm going to really have time to do that in the near future. But... Hopefully soon-ish. I also want to go out west. I'm actually thinking of maybe going to like the Portland or Seattle area in August, but I'm not sure. And as far as other areas, I kind of want to go to Bali or Thailand. I think it would also be really awesome to see Greece, India. At some point in time, I want to go back to Argentina and go backpacking through the Patagonias. What are the main differences you've noticed so far between Pittsburgh and Miami as a vegan? So I've only been here for about like a week, so I don't know how qualified I am to answer this question, but I would definitely say the fruit is a lot better in Miami, and I think it is a little less expensive. In terms of restaurants, I actually think that there were more specifically vegan places in Pittsburgh, but I still have to explore Miami. That question was actually from my friend Amanda, and then she asked me this other hilarious question, which is, would you rather fight off one horse-sized duck or 10 duck-sized horses? <laughs> Both of them sound really terrifying to me. Um, even though I don't like the idea of a really large duck, I think it would be easier to run away from one thing versus 10 small things. So a few people asked me who my favorite YouTuber or Instagrammer was or where I find inspiration. So I'm just going to generalize it and say who inspires me. Basically all of the accounts that I follow on Instagram inspire me in some way. And all of the people I'm subscribed to on YouTube as well. I think the vegan community is awesome and I really wish I could just meet every single one of you. But I'd say right now my top three are probably... Ellen or Mango Island Mama, her videos on YouTube are just amazing. Bonnie Rebecca because duh. And then Annie Tarasova, I think everything that she puts out is just gorgeous and so well thought out. So if you guys don't know who those people are, I'll link them down below and you should definitely go subscribe to them and follow them on other social media. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Honestly, this is a really hard question because I don't really know. I'll finish graduate school in three years and I will probably move away from Miami. I'll probably be practicing physical therapy in some way, shape or form. But I would still like to see myself sort of traveling the world and like soaking in all these experiences and seeing our beautiful planet, etc. So I don't know, hopefully in like some foreign country or settled down like in a place that I truly love and just being happy. 
If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? So I really want to say Australia because Australia just seems so awesome but I've never lived there, so maybe there's like some awful like secret that everyone is hiding from me, but I'm still gonna say Australia. <laughs> favorite and least favorite subjects in high school, anatomy and calculus. How do you stay motivated to keep going in school? Personally, I study something that I found absolutely fascinating and I really want to be physical therapist and I'm looking forward to getting my degree, so that sort of just drives me to work hard in school. Is it contradictory for a vegan to smoke because of health reasons? I'm assuming that this person is referring to cigarettes and no, technically I don't think there's anything involved in the process of making cigarettes that isn't vegan and you can be a vegan for purely ethical purposes and not really care about the health aspects however i think that most vegans are concerned with health aspects and just me personally i hate smoking and i don't understand why people would do that it's like a death wish i personally would never smoke i don't think it's cool i don't understand why people still do it but at the end of the day if someone was like well i want to go vegan but i heard vegans can't smoke cigarettes i would say you can go vegan anyways and i will still love you what is the weirdest thing a stranger has said to you? Okay, so to be honest, I don't really know why, but I never attract normal guys, and I literally have so many stories about weird, creepy boy strangers like coming up to me and doing things, and it's just stupid. But the weirdest is probably this one time I was just walking down the street, and I was wearing a more colorful dress, and this guy just walked up to me and said, you look like a butterfly. Here, I'll grab the dress and show you. I mean, it's patterned, but like, I don't really think any girl would think it would be a compliment to be told that she looks like a butterfly. Needless to say, it did not work and I did not give him my number. Best thing to say to someone who is considering going vegan, just do it and also watch Earthlings. Okay guys, I'm gonna cut it off here. I think I've answered a decent amount of questions. There were a few questions that I didn't answer, but I actually think they'd be good video topics, so I will try to get around to answering those. And also, I do have a Tumblr account where I answer questions on a almost daily basis, so if you have a question that you didn't get to ask, or your question didn't ask, and you still really wanna hear the answer, you can message me on there as well. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye.